Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me I'm Katie and today I'm going all out with the graphite I'd recently purchased some of the Derwent Graphitint pencils to accompany the Derwent Graphitint pan set and I wanted to give them a try but I wanted to use them all together rather than separately just because it's more practical and I wanted to see how well they partner together as well now I'm pretty sure you can get larger sets of these but I went for the 12 set and the colours included are cool grey, cloud grey, midnight black, storm, what a great name for a colour, cocoa, cool brown, chestnut, ivy, slate green, dark indigo, aubergine and port. Upon swatching these I noticed how easily they dissolved with water and how vibrant the colours were when they came out but they still have that nice muted tone to them. They're muted and vibrant. What an oxymoron, right? Applying them next to each other on a piece of watercolour paper and blending them in also proved really nice. You don't get a great deal of ghosting with this, which you tend to with watercolour pencils and similar types, but it's still there. But that is the nature of the material and that's why we like them. For this piece as well, I decided to use a lot of other water-soluble graphite pencils that I have and I also used the Caran d'Ache black watercolour pencil which arrived in a scroller box, the one that contained the ink tents. And the reason I used this was I did not want any colour to lift once I put that outline down, which is why I applied it first. Another thing to note as well with any graphite media is you do have that sheen and there's only a certain level of dark tones you can get before it just doesn't get any darker. So I wanted that strong outline there. This and the exception of another pencil I use later on in the video are the only non-graphite ones I use. Everything else on here is graphite based. So let's talk about the picture. I have been watching Cursed on Netflix and I am all very down with fantasy again at the moment and I noticed there were a lot of fey creatures and a few years ago I actually did an exhibition called Fey and Fine Lines and it, it it just made me think of that and I wanted to do a piece not inspired by the TV series or the, the Netflix series but just I wanted to go back to my roots of drawing lots of fantasy so I decided to paint or draw a satyress. I've also gone for that lovely Art Nouveau style that I seem to quite like and enjoy doing at the moment as well. It just all seemed really fitting. I decided to activate the Caran d'Ache watercolour pencil. I'm going to call it that, I know it's got a proper name but I'm going to just refer to it as that. And once that's activated it doesn't really come back to life. There will be bits throughout this video where it does and that's probably because I didn't activate it properly with the water but that's okay, I kind of don't mind that happening, it just adds to it, it brings out the depth and the shadows which I wanted on here. Now I also use the Derwent Graphitint pan set as well as the Derivan Liquid Graphite which I received in the July scroll box, which I absolutely love. It's quite different to how the watercolour pans work, and I'm going to call them watercolour pans because saying the do and graphitant watercolour pan set is a mouthful, so I'm going to refer to them in this video as the watercolour versions, okay? Once that layer of the Caran d'Ache watercolour pencil is all done and dusted, I don't go back to it, I start in there with the graphitin pencils and I absolutely love how you don't have to put a great deal of pressure down to get a nice colour payoff and if it doesn't put enough colour down you can always go over it again. I tend to tilt my pencil on its side just so I've got a wider area of coverage and it avoids any harsh lines which can lead to a bit of ghosting however it does happen a little bit by accident where I might have not applied 100% even pressure but that's okay that is the nature of this for the oak leaves I originally go in there with the graphitint watercolors and I, I just liked the green that was in there and I thought that would just be nice for the oak leaves. For the hair again 
I go straight in there with the pencils but I also bring it to life by using a wash of the pan version as well. There are a couple of duplicate colours with the pan set and the pencils but again I don't see that as a negative because that just means I can have a little bit more control over some areas compared to others. I absolutely love how the pencil application and the wash version are completely different. I love how these colours melt. They are so, I want to say buttery, but that's not quite the right way to describe it. But they just activate beautifully. And I, I am absolutely in love with this material at the moment. I'll try not to bore you all to death on my channel by using this all the time. But I really like them. There's just something about them. There's something about all of the textures I can achieve by adding layers or whilst it's still wet, adding just clean water in there to create all these strange, unusual textures. I absolutely love them. One thing I really like about these pencils as well is once the paper's dry, it's already had a wash of colour on there. The application is just the same as if there wasn't a wash of colour. I don't know what it is about them but it might be because of the fact they're graphite based and they're going to sit slightly differently on the paper than perhaps an oil based or a wax based coloured pencil or a watercolour pencil would. I don't know, it just seemed to just melt beautifully. And again, I think tilting the pencil on its side and not adding a huge amount of pressure did help, but because of the high colour payoff, I didn't need to. To bring out a little bit more depth in the background, I used the der Deriv... I can never... I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to just say the liquid graphite from last month's scroller box. And I just did a wash of that, and again, added the textures. I used the yellow one and a hint of the blue to obviously create that green and again just built those layers up because the graphite will sit in one place but the pigment or the dye of the colour itself will move around and oh I just I just really like them I don't know what it is the pencil I use to add in the areas where I don't want to be reactivated with water is the Mars Lumograph I think it might be an 8B black pencil it's very weird but it's very good it's not like a coloured pencil it does erase but it's it's really it's really black it's almost as good as using a liner pen perhaps although I wanted to avoid using that because I think the graphite would have still shone through whereas with using this pencil it was flat and it wasn't affected by any shininess in there for the background I used a combination of the aubergine and port colours with both graphite tint pencils and the pan set and again I did this with the texture because I just really like how it works I, I, it, I love how versatile these are, I love what I can do with them I like the fact that I now have options of working on larger areas with the pan sets but more intricate areas with the pencils I think they go together really well I think I've just gushed about these pencils pretty much throughout this video or maybe the water soluble graphite in general it's not a medium I used to like I used to really dislike it but since trying the pans it's made me sort of want to try the other versions as well and I love it I absolutely love it I just keep saying that throughout the whole video I just go in there with a white gel pen just to add a few highlights where perhaps I couldn't erase them off or I didn't want to erase them off and just make certain areas glow a little bit more. I do hope you like this picture because I have added it to my Redbubble store and I will leave a link to that in my description so please check it out. It's still very new, there's not a huge amount on there but this picture will be on there and available to have as cards and little prints as well as a few others so be sure to check it out. I want to say a massive thank you for watching, I hope this has been useful and you've enjoyed it and if you have hit like, if you're new here please subscribe and I will see you lovely lot on the next video, bye!